Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions, my name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Ernesto, a quick RPG by developer Daniel Ben. This is a very simple, very accessible, roguelike, like light. Yes, I'm coining that term right now because the genre classifications were not nearly convoluted enough. Uh, but if you don't know what that means, essentially what we're going for here is a sort of dynamic experience where every time you play it is a little bit different. There is permadeath and every time you die you start back at the beginning. Uh, and it sort of reminds me a little bit of a fusion of something like maybe Cardinal Quest by the fact that it has basically no inventory management, uh, and then also maybe a little bit of 10 million for partially the graphical aesthetic and a little bit of the charm and appeal to it. Uh, so let's just get right into things. Uh, it's a pretty simple game to explain. There's not all that much going on here. Uh, you'll notice the UI in the bottom left corner is very simple as well. We've got two hearts, and it looks like two light bulbs, which I'm going to guess uh, have something to do with opening up tiles or maybe showing us something we didn't see before. I'm not actually 100% sure on that. Then we've got coins down there, which we have zero of, and then it looks like you know, we've got our attack power, which is the whip. So we are sort of a Spelunky-inspired explorer or something like that. Uh, to begin, we actually need to pick one of these four entrance-slash-exit points, and basically we just need to get from one of these to another of these, and it can be any one of them, uh, by whatever path we choose. And each one of these tiles is going to determine our fate, and essentially, we just want to try and find strategically the best option that's going to take us through the most things that are going to allow us to get the best uh, strategic advantage for each floor, which is going to get harder and harder and harder, and eventually will culminate in a boss fight. So I'm going to pick this one up at the top right corner. Uh, my choices now is that I can move in any one of the four cardinal directions. There are no diagonals here. And I want to try and get to this treasure, of course, in the top right corner. Uh, there are a few other tiles worth noting here, an antidote, which if I get bitten by a snake, which is highly likely that that'll happen, uh, then I can come back here and grab that. I also want to try and grab some tools, which are great for disarming traps. Then there's a few of these wild card, uh, tunnel cards, or spaces, which if we step on, they may or may not be trapped, and the best way to figure that out is to step on an oracle tile, which will then show us all of those things. Uh, then, of course, there's just things like bats here, we've got snakes, of course, other random enemies will show up later on, and we just try to basically just get whatever advantage we can. So let's start out by going uh, one tile to the left. We're going to make our way straight towards the snake first off, that way if we can fight him and we do get bitten, uh, we can just go back and grab this antidote. This may or may not be a good call. We're going to see in a second here. Uh, the snake actually bit me and killed me in one move, so that's unfortunate. I didn't even get a chance to really start that one. I had a whole plan out, and all that stuff is gone now. Let's start again. So first things first, we're going to take another look around. Maybe we'll not try to fight snakes this time, because that didn't go very well. Uh, there are a lot of medkits over here, and I see that I can probably make it over to this chest pretty easily. In fact, I don't even need to fight this bat. But I'm going to try to anyway, just because uh, basically the more you fight, the more you're going to end up with good stuff in the end, as with pretty much any RPG. Uh, Severance the God Killer. This seems like a good place to go. Maybe we want to go try and get a weapon. Seems like it's the same weapon on every tile. I don't know how that goes exactly. So let's get one of these med kits. And can I... I think I can cross my own path, right? Oh, I can back up. Oh, I can fight the bat again. It just undoes that. Alright, so I need to make one linear path. I didn't even know that. And if you back up over your own thing, it just backs up to the point where you clicked on that space. So this may or may not be trapped, and now I'm going to have to potentially get in trouble. No, just a tunnel, so we're safe. We can go to a dead explorer. Could have gold, a med kit, or nothing at all. So that's actually a positive tile, even though it doesn't look all that good. Uh, we actually found a med kit, so we will be able to heal from that, which is great. And then let's check... Uh, yep, did we get... What is this? We got an extra attack power from upgrading from a whip to a sword. Uh, so we can go one more tile over. That's just a tunnel. We killed a bat, and we actually leveled up, so we get an additional uh, bit of HP. And I want to go down and grab these tools, which means we're going to have to now take an even more convoluted path, but that's alright. Uh, we can grab this med kit. Let's see what this sign says. Uh, the dungeon god is on level 4, get strong. That's pretty good advice, actually. Uh, then we can go ahead and grab this gold, more gold. I would fight this snake, but I don't really want to get poisoned because I don't see any antidotes around, so I think I'm just going to go over here, which is also just a tunnel. And we'll take this path because we can get a med kit, then one more gold, and exit a floor. Alright, so that is how that level goes. It wasn't all that bad. We got a little lucky, though. Uh, we've got some other new enemies that show up on floor 2. We got a Templar outfit. This is actually equipable, and I believe gives us extra HP. Uh, then a Dungeon God Fanatic takes two hits to die, gives three experience, 
And any other enemies? I think it's mostly just snakes and bats and those guys for now. So we'll see if uh, the next level gives us anything more frightening. So where do we want to start? I kind of want to head over in this direction and get this golem killer, but there might be quite a few dudes in my way, because as you'll notice, there is only two exits and uh, entrances here, so, I mean, really, I don't have a lot of options, but it depends which side I start on uh, the path that I'm going to end up taking. I could actually go through here and pretty much not necessarily fight anyone my whole way. That's probably not a good idea, because I want to level up as much as possible. But let's grab the extra gold. I'm not sure what I spend gold on just yet. I'm assuming there's going to be shops at some point or some sort of a check that makes me need to use that. Uh, just for the sake of argument, let's see how hard these guys are to kill. All right, we did take him out, I believe. Uh, smites, one time, so he kills Dungeon God Fanatic, experience plus three. Okay, excellent. Uh, we can go grab some more tools. And I think we could just hit this uh, path of medkits all the way back up. And then we'll see if we can maybe kill this bat. Yep, get a level up there. And we got the Templar outfit, just a tunnel, and there we go, now we've got better attack power. And I'll go ahead and grab this medkit. That was actually a pretty bad trap, I wish I had known that was there, because we almost died on that one. Uh, now I'm going to try and just avoid fighting stuff for a moment. Heals wounds. Oh, I could have also used a medkit somewhere, right? Kind of forgot that I had that option. Uh, let's go this way. There are all the traps, so we're going to actually possibly have to fight. Well, actually, we could probably just go fight this guy, grab an antidote either way. Uh, but yeah, the only way down through this door is through this guy, one way or the other, so I guess we're going to have to bother him. Uh, Dungeon God Fanatic was deceived by the disguise. Oh, let me sneak by him. It doesn't actually give me more HP after all. And is there another easy med kit I can go to? I don't care. Let's just keep going. We made it to level 3. It's the furthest I've gotten. I only did one run so far, but I do have the Golem Crusher thing, so that should help me with this guy down here. Uh, which side do I want to start on, though? Let's strategize for a moment. So if I start up here, there's another weapon upgrade, but I think I only needed to get that one time. Still don't want to get poisoned, so snakes are probably best to avoid if possible. Uh, going up here means I'm exposed to a lot of traps, potentially, but I think it might be the safest way, because I can actually hit this oracle and see if that's maybe... One, uh, either going through this path or going up above, which is going to put me into a snake position. I think I'm just going to go up. So let's start down here. We'll fight a bat. We'll get a med kit. Hope this isn't a trap. Alright, it's just a tunnel. We're good. Uh, let's hit this med kit and see where the traps are. So, actually looks like it's fairly safe if I just want to take the lower route. So I can go back along all these med kits, cross over here go over to the bat, and then up, and now I just have to remember where that space was. And hopefully those don't change when we reroute our way through. Alright, look at all that med kit healing we're doing. Not even necessary. Alright, we managed to take him out, no problem. And we're up and out, so we've actually made it to the final area. Uh, Dungeon God hits three times, can take four hits, does not allow escaping. Oh, could I escape before? I didn't even know that. I don't know what all these tiles are, but I guess we're going to find out in a moment. Um, empty tunnels all around us. Let's go grab one of these med kits. Might have to try and double back somehow. I have to go through toxic gas one way or the other. That's unfortunate. Now I'm going to be poisoned. And okay, well, he killed me almost instantly. That is super lame, and, and the uh, text actually seems to have gotten off the bottom of the screen, but then it just starts you over again, repeat the process, and try and make better decisions on the next run. And it also reminds me a little bit of, like, the Dungeons of Dreadmore style thing, where, you know, you're progressing down and down and down through chambers and more chambers, and I know that was kind of influenced through Diablo, and that was probably influenced through a series of other games, but anyway, the linear progression of RPGs has led us to this point where we can now make these very distilled down, very simple concepts out of them, and I really like that. I think it serves to really broaden up the spectrum of different people that might be able to play something like this and get something out of it. And it takes almost no time to learn. It's just kind of rewarding, it's a fun experience, and it's one that can be played a bunch of times in a row. And it also seems like something that could be easily expanded upon if the developer wanted to take this a lot further, add in new enemy types, add in more floors, add in, you know, even light inventory management in some sort of like a hardcore mode. Uh, not that that's necessarily something we need, considering sort of the strength of the game is how uh, little you needed to actually know to play it. But if you wanted to take this concept further, 
you know, with very little in terms of art assets and animation, you could really do a lot of good work with it. So I enjoy uh, Ernesto quite a bit. I definitely recommend you check it out. Link is going to be right in the description if you want to play it. Like I said, totally free. You can play it on Congregate if you want, right in your browser. It's not even an especially long load considering the graphics here. I mean, it's mostly, like, I'm going to guess, like, 16 by 16 uh, pixel sprites, so should be easy on even if you have a pretty bad internet connection or happen to be playing on a potato like I've had some commenters mention in the past. So with that, though, I will leave you for another day. Thank you, of course, for watching and for being here, and feel free to check through some of the other stuff in the description if you're interested in finding more about what I do. I've got my Twitter in there, I've got my Facebook in there, I've got my Twitch page where I stream, and of course, Indie-Impressions.com, which is where you can go for many, many more episodes in this series, over 600, in fact, and they're all categorized and sorted for you, so if you're looking for a particular type of game, like other RPGs, of course, you can feel free to sort them and then see what I've done in the past for that, so it should help you discover some new games hopefully so with that i will see you again tomorrow hopefully you come back again new uh new episodes every single day so i'll catch you tomorrow and i hope you have a lovely night talk to you later